Hello. Um, so auto fixture is a really interesting tool for writing unit tests in a sort of more seamless, frictionless kind of way. Um, it's written by a guy called Mark Seaman who wrote the uh, dependency injection .NET book um, and has a really interesting blog about unit testing and dependency injection and all sorts of other really interesting topics. Uh, so I thought I'd give a quick overview of auto fixture and um, see, uh, see if there was much interest in sort of making use of it and stuff. So first of all, why would you make use of it? How many of you have read this book? Awesome. That's a really good number. How many of you remember the stuff that's written in it? Only about four of you, okay. <laughs> um, so there's a few um, sort of recommendations that it makes, and the sort of key one is write the test that you'd want to read. So make your test as readable as possible. And this is one of the things that Autofixture makes really easy. It cuts out a lot of the sort of setup and context that you have to put into complicated unit tests and just sort of takes care of it for you. It also provides a um, sort of implementation of the test data builder pattern that the Goose book recommends and also allows you to sort of add more structure and what have you to your unit tests so that it's um, so that they follow a very sort of set format. So where can you make use of auto fixture? Well in any of your unit tests um, Unit tests follow one of two patterns. One is the AAA pattern, arrange, act, assert. The other one that Mark prefers is uh, the four-phase test, which is described in X-unit patterns, uh, which is a superset of the AAA uh, pattern, really. It is set up, excise, verify, and tear down. Um, so the first three steps map to the AAA pattern, and then tear down is an extra step at the end to sort of clear up your environment at the end. An auto fixture really fits into the setup step of this process. So what can you do with auto fixture? Well, one of the things that you can do is um, automatically generate anonymous test variables. So for example, if you've got a bit of data in your test that you don't really care about, but it's just there to sort of help the test along, um, then really you don't want to use a magic string or a magic number or anything like that. You want to make it obviously anonymous. So if you're doing it by hand, you might do that by calling your variable anonymous text and then make it doubly obvious by setting the string to say it's anonymous text as well. What you can do with auto fixture is just create a string or an int and it will randomly generate you an integer or a string or an instance of a particular type that you need. Um, it's really quite flexible in terms of what it can create for you. It can also create anonymous collections. It's uh, very similar to the anonymous variables, but it will always create you three items in your collection. Three is many. If you've got one thing, then you don't have plural things at all. You've just got a single thing. If you've got two things, then you've got a sort of head and a tail in a list, but you don't have the middle. If you've got three things, then suddenly you've got the head, the tail, and the body of the list, and then anything else is sort of equivalent to that, really. Um, so three items in your collection is enough to get you by, really. Uh, it can provide you coverage over a large input space. So if, for example, you want to write a function that works on the set of natural numbers, for example, like if you're testing addition or something like that, uh, then it can create you randomly generated numbers so that you don't have to worry about uh, going through the entirety of the infinite space of natural numbers, which will just take forever. Um, you can uh, use either randomised or sequential input as you prefer. The, um, the API is sort of fairly flexible in terms of what it will let you do. Um, finally, there's a, uh, a SUT factory. So a SUT is, a, is the system under test. It's a sort of generalised bit of um, unit testing terminology, really. It's the class that you're testing in your, in your unit test. Um, essentially, best practice says that you shouldn't depend on the SUTs constructor because then that um, leads to slightly brittle tests when it comes to refactoring them, adding new dependencies <coughs> to, your, uh, to your class or removing dependencies or reordering them or, or whatever. You've suddenly got a whole load of tests that you have to fix up as well. Instead, you can use a factory method, if you're doing it by hand, to 
allow you to only have to make that change in one place and then just call the factory method instead. What AutoFixer allows you to do is just call a generalised implementation, really, and it will create your, um, your SUPT for you. Uh, generalised test data by Auto, as I said in the, um, uh, in the introduction, Goose recommends this sort of format as being uh, a good way to create test data that is a bit more complex than just a sort of random string that you need. Um, also, Fixture will allow you to do this sort of thing without having to hand roll your own builder classes and all the rest of it, which can get a bit laborious to, uh, to maintain and to write in the first place if you've got quite a few of them that you need to put together. Um, the thing that I really like about this is the sort of fluent syntax of it that you get because um, you, it, it just sort of makes it really obvious what, what it is that you're creating. You're creating a customer with that first name and surname and that they want to be shipped to that, uh, that company or something. Um, rather than going through the constructor or something and saying uh, new customer Alastair Smith Reggae doesn't necessarily match up what the um, what the data is with what the fields are. Uh, also, Fixture also has some idioms, um, so you can do automated guard clause testing. So, for example, if you want to uh, test that your constructors throw a null argument null exception if a dependency isn't provided, um, there's a really sort of nice way of doing that through reflection with Auto Fixture. Uh, there's something with composite assertions so that you can put together more complex assertions from sort of building blocks um, and a whole bunch more in the idioms library. That this is a sort of additional package on the get that you can download as um, it, once you sort of get into auto fixture in a bit more detail. So a few code samples. So this is a standard auto fixture test. You can see that we've got the fixture set up here. Um, we've got the exercise, the verify, and there's no teardown in this test at all. Um, we've got an example of an anonymous variable and the SUP factory pattern that I mentioned earlier. And we're just using auto fixture to create us the anonymous variable and the SUT as well. And then we just go through and assert on it. But what's really nice is that we using um, an extra bit of auto fixtures API, we can actually get that test down to two lines. Because instead we can pass in the expected number and the SUT and use this auto data attribute instead to automatically populate that. So this test is now it's essentially taking care of the setup stage for you and you can just focus entirely on the purpose of the test, the exercise and the ver verification. Uh, this auto data attribute is supported by a number of the most common unit testing frameworks such as xunit.net and nunit. It requires a little bit of extra setup in nunit I found when preparing this talk which makes it a little bit less nice than it is with xunit but it still works okay. Uh, guard clause assertions, so in this case we need to do, um, do a bit of customization of the fixture that we get from auto fixture. So what we're doing here is we're saying that anything that um, can't be provided for by auto fixture automatically, so any complex type essentially, will instead be, uh, will instead be supplied by an end substitute mock. Um, so it automatically hooks into your mocking framework of choice and will be able to give you a mock instance of a more complex type if you wish. Uh, we then create the guard clause assertion and we verify that the constructors of our class um, do in fact throw the, uh, the exception. So it takes care of your null checking and what have you automatically for you. You're fairly much over time. So right, okay, there's only like two slides left. Um, the auto mocking container is uh, sort of very similar to what I just mentioned with the, um, with the end substitute hooking. So here we're creating an instance of iRepository using end substitute to do so. Uh, we then just go through the sort of usual exercise and verify, and this is a bit of end substitute goodness to, um, uh, to assert that the call to save was, uh, was provided. So, a couple of frequently asked questions. How does it differ from PEX? If you're familiar with PEX, then you may uh, know it as being a sort of automated test case generator. Um, 
auto fixture doesn't really do the automated test case generation it does automated test data generation so there's a slight difference there is it a mocking library no it can hook into your mocking library of choice is it an ioc container no it has those sorts of behaviors but uh, that's not really its purpose at all and finally you can find out some more in the plural site advanced testing <coughs> course which is one of marks um, herding code episode 165 is an interview with Mark and uh, is, is really good, really interesting, packed full of stuff on this. GitHub page, Mark's blog as well. That's it.